And so to go faster in life, we have to practice self-leadership. Now, everybody self-leads to a point. We all, you know, you're all here, right? You got here on time, well, most of you, and except for the guy that you gave a hard time, right? <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and, I mean, you took a shower this morning, you cleaned your teeth, you got to work, you managed to self-regulate. Self-leadership, in fact, is a little bit like taking a shower because in 2012, I wrote this book, and with a Dr. Anna Kazan, who is actually from Brazil, I've never met Anna. I managed to write a book in 2011 using Skype. And we define self-leadership as the practice of intentionally influencing your thinking, feeling, and actions towards your objectives. It's a practice. Taking a shower is a practice. Right? Learning to play the piano is a practice. Right? I've been teaching self-leadership for nearly 25 years, and if I'm having a meltdown, my wife will say, go self-leadership yourself. <laughs> right? Because it is a practice. I don't do it every day. I try and do it every day, or I don't do it to my best. But it is a practice of intentionally influencing our thinking and feeling. So you've all got thoughts right now, right? Does, can everybody here think? Yes? <laughs> Whose thoughts are they? Mine, yes, they're your thoughts. Now, you're wondering whether I'm going to plant thoughts in your head, right? This is not a hypnosis show, but, you know, I could do that if you want, but that's after we have a couple of beers, okay? But, <laughs> but you each own your thoughts, don't you? You have thoughts. Do you have good thoughts? Positive thoughts? Do you have negative thoughts? Oh, crap. You know, right? You have that thought. So we all have thoughts. We all have feelings. Sometimes they're positive, sometimes they're negative. The important distinction here is that we own them. And when we own something, we can influence it, right? When you have ownership of something, you get control. If you don't own it, you shouldn't be messing around with it, right? But if you own it, you can move towards your objectives. So there are three components to self-leadership. Self-awareness, knowing what I'm thinking, knowing what I'm feeling, knowing what my inner narrative is. What am I telling myself? What, what's the self-talk saying? Is it saying, hey, you're creative, you, you, know, you are uh, somebody who is innovative and you really can add value to this organization. Are you saying to yourself, you know, I'm a total imposter here, I don't know what I'm doing, I don't know why I'm here and I'm surprised they're paying me. Uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, you could say either or, and the, the, the laughs here are a little bit worrying, but there you go. I mean, you know, it just depends. Because we all have a level of imposter syndrome. Do we not? Yeah, I do. We do, right? I still do, right? So the self-awareness. Now, self-regulation, I talked about taking a shower, cleaning your teeth, managing your emotions in stress. How do we handle situations? I mean, back to the driving, right? Somebody cuts in front of you in traffic, you know, do you chase after them and yell at them? Or do you just go, hey, off you go. You have a nice day now. Right? The second option is much better. And of course, self-learning. And a congratulations, now I should all give yourself a, a pat on the back for taking time out midweek on an evening to improve yourselves. Most people don't. Most people don't learn after they leave university or school. Even. The secret here is to be the driver, not the passenger. Now, you can see the stunning likeness between me and Jason Stratton, right? <laughs> we are clearly related. Not. <laughs> yeah, I wish. Um, yeah. All right. So, I mean, the key question is that you can self-coach yourself from today. And if you want to take a photo of this slide, you need to be regularly asking yourself these questions. Where, where do you want to go? And ask it of, of somebody else. Or if you say to yourself, where do I want to go? How do you want to get there? Who do you want to go with you? Because it's really interesting who's going on the journey with you. You have to really think about that. And the last one, how fast do you want to go? Now, we're in Portugal, so very fast, of course. Okay. My. That's the key lesson tonight. The key piece of framing. You were born. You didn't choose the time, place of your birth, your gender, your ethnicity, and your nationality. Although, you, if you had a choice, you would be Portuguese, right? But from this point on, you can own it. Now, psychologists and philosophers have come to the conclusion that we have very little... Free, free will, right? Why are you here tonight? Did you make the decision? Did somebody invite you? What was the, what was the whole process that caused you to be, yes, you're pointing to somebody, right? That's blind, right? It's your fault that I'm here, right? 
So it's actually interesting how we make decisions, and even at the highest level of leadership, how people make decisions, the cognitive biases that go into those decisions. And I work with senior leaders breaking down, how did you make that decision, or how are you going to make that decision? So the interesting thing is, most of what we think and feel is pre-programmed. It's an algorithm of our DNA and our childhood upbringing. But the interesting thing is that the moment you make a choice, and say, this is my life, this is my career, I'm going to take ownership of my thinking, my feeling, my words, my actions. The moment you say mine, like a two-year-old, and by the way, that is my son when he was two. <laughs> He's a bit bigger than that now. But he was so cute and he did mine. And anybody who's, got a, anybody who's a parent here, you've, your kid has said, mine. It's clearly built into our childhood psychology, isn't it? And what do we as parents say? You must share. share. So actually we get deprogrammed to do the very thing that we should be doing is taking ownership of our thoughts, feelings, words and actions. And in this case, our creativity and our innovation. It's mine. Mine. So who's thinking it's mine? I asked you that earlier and you went, I hope it's mine. Let me just ask you that again. Who's thinking is it? Mine. Oh, that was just awful. Okay. Um, clearly we need the snacks. Who's thinking is it? Mine. Much better. Whose feelings are they? Mine. Very good. So you will no longer say, he made me angry. She made me frustrated. They are the problem, aren't they? I blame HR. Anybody here from HR? <laughs> because it's always they are the problem. Never, I'm going to take ownership of the problem. It's always they. All right. Whose actions are they? Mine. Ah, you like that one. I remember being, when, when Nathan was a bit bigger, being at rugby with him, and uh, this mother was, was yelling at her son, who'd done something naughty. And she said, if your friends jumped off a bridge, would you jump too? And he said, Duh, yeah. <laughs> because when you're a kid, you know, it's group actions. To do something for yourself feels weird. What about my mum? What about my dad? What about my kids? You know, to make your own choices, but to live your own life is what it's all about. 